Behind every bit of mom wisdom is a story. A story of a real mom and real kids just trying to love each other well. Whether you're cozied up on the couch with a mug of coffee, pulling out of car line and heading to work, or out for a walk, you're welcome to join us as we share stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm On Podcast. Welcome to the I'm Mom Podcast. I'm Abby, once again with Susan and Chloe and Megan, and we're so glad you're here. Today's story, When Your Kid's a Whiner, comes from, actually from my friend Melissa, but she has given me permission to share it. It's about her daughter, Grace, who's 12 years old. Um, And I've heard a lot of stories over the years about Grace. Melissa said that Grace is kind and generous and fun. I've met her myself, and she has all those things, but she's also a complainer. She's also a kid that I have heard whine. Um, She just doesn't really hold back from sharing what she feels. I guess some kids might internalize their discomfort or their frustration, but Grace does not. She lets it be known. Um, And my friend Melissa said that she reached her limit with Grace when they were on a camping trip back in October. She said that Grace whined and complained about everything, you know, the, the drive to the campsite, the fact that she had to help pitch the tent, Um, that she had to sleep between her brother and her sister in the tent in her sleeping bag, Um, the dinner that Melissa planned, the bugs, the way that her s'mores made her hands sticky. And she said it just kind of like ruined their family camping trip. And she said it got to the point that even uh, the youngest child, who's nine, said, man, Grace, you whine a lot. So like the siblings are noticing too. And so basically, that means it's not a family thing. It is it is her personality. And Melissa said that in a moment of like, I've totally just had it, she considered making Gray sleep in the car. <laughs> oh, my God. But she thought better of it. And instead, she ended up sleeping in the car herself. So mom slept in her minivan. Um, and just the to get away from the To daughter. get away and to make a statement. Wow. That's yeah. not fair to the kid, the other kids. <laughs> well, and she said, she's like, I don't know if this was the best decision, but I felt like I just needed to make a statement. And she said the next day, Grace apologized for her attitude, but she said, I know it's going to keep going because she has been this way since she was little. And well, I have one. Oh, sorry. I have one quick question before we really get into it. So I, I guess my thought is, is whining complaining about something or is it whining for something? Because right now my three-year-old, he very mm-hmm. much so whines for things. Like if he wants something, he'll just whine and whine and whine and whine and ask over and over again, um, even if I have given him an answer. Yeah, I think that maybe that's the difference between whining and complaining or uh, whine has like a tone to it maybe. I think complaining comes more from a, you know, a heart of discontent. You're just not happy with Mm -hmm. anything. Where sometimes in the case of Megan, your son, you're talking about somebody who's really goal or like he's focused on something and wants something. Mm -hmm. Can that be discontent too? Or can it be just passion that they just want to make it happen? Right, right. But it is a kind of repetitive tone that I think both are similar. Somewhere. Yeah. Maybe it's the tone I'm thinking because he'll be like, I want that. And right. It's very whiny. That's whining. Yeah. I think little kids tend to whine where older kids tend to complain. I mean, mm-hmm. you wouldn't expect that tone to come out of a 15 year old, or I'd hope not. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting as I listen to Melissa tell me this story about Grace. And as I've known her over the years, I laugh to myself because I realized that in a lot of ways I was Grace. My mom will tell you a story about uh, when we went on vacation and um, I was in a whiny mood like the entire time. It wasn't hormones. I was a little bit, you know, older than Grace. Um, it wasn't hormones, wasn't teenage years, because even as a little kid, my nickname was Krabby Abby. Aww. Like Ooh. that was what she called me. Um, so I'd been honing this craft of complaining for many, many years. Um, and well, like one vacation, I complained so much about being bored that my mom started charging me money for saying the B word. So like anytime I say bored, she would make me give her like a quarter or That's something funny. like that. Way so, to go, mom. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, for for the mom who's listening, who has a child who, whatever you want to call it, whines or complains a lot. And the point is have hope because I don't think I'm a whiner anymore. <laughs> but I also don't know how many tools my parents gave me to step outside of that whiny habit or that complaining habit. So it's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is do kids just grow out of it or is there something we can do as moms to help them process what they're feeling that leads them to whine? Mm. Now, so Megan, you already said James likes to whine. Susan, were you any of your kids whiners? 
I really don't think they were. I don't remember them whine, any one of them whining a lot. Yeah. I think they were passionate. Megan, her brother, he was super persistent. Like if he wanted something, um, but he didn't whine about it. He just would third child come after me a lot. Mm-hmm. Like he mm-hmm. didn't let it go. You mm-hmm. know, he just kept trying different angles. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, as you said that, I wonder if the patience level of the mom is a factor in all of it. You know, like if you're feeling, um, if you're keyed in on the tone or if you're keyed in on what your child is saying, then maybe you're more inclined to think, oh, they're whining. Whereas if you were feeling patient and, you know, you mm-hmm. you could handle all that's coming at you from the kids, maybe it didn't feel like complaining. It was just, oh, they're just being kids. And Megan, you may remember, I do remember saying, can you say that in a kinder tone? Mm. Can you say that with a happy voice? So I think sometimes it is just a little kind of prompting when Mm -hmm. kids are little. But I do think some kids tend to be more discontented than others. Or Debbie Downers, we used to call them like, you're such a Debbie Downer. Everything is always negative versus the the happy-go-lucky child where everything's always great. Chloe, you've mentioned that you feel a lot. Do you... I would imagine that somebody who has strong feelings like you did as a kid and do now would express them a lot. Do you think that this is you. I actually wasn't a whiny kid. Um, my mom always says she's like, we just were so lucky because me and my brothers were really like, we weren't complainers. We weren't whiny. Um, I do remember my mom, like when I was younger and was growing out of that, she would say like something along the lines of talk to me when mm-hmm. you're not going to talk in a whiny tone. Mm-hmm. Um, but that it wasn't. I think we were pretty content kids for the most part. Yeah. So why do we think, let's let's talk about this. Why do some kids complain more than others? So two kids, same family, one will complain about the dinner on the table and the other one won't, even if both of them feel the same about the dinner. Why do some kids, what is it about a personality in a child? You know, like for the mom who's listening and she's like, this kid has exactly what his brother has, but he keeps, mm. you know, this is the tone I hear out of him all the time where he keeps complaining. Well, I think some kids, just like some kids are kinder or just some, mm-hmm. some kids are, have more gratitude for things. I think it is a personality. Mm-hmm. I think we all have positive and negatives in our personalities. And as a mom, you have to look for both, encourage one and discourage the other. Yeah. I think some kids have more of like an Eeyore sort yes. of um, inclination. <laughs> there we go. Right? Debbie Downer. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that they're a bad kid or just that negative outlook that some people naturally have. You know, some people kind of are naturally pessimists or optimists or realists. And when you're a child, that negative attitude, you probably don't hold it in. You don't know that it's not polite or not socially acceptable to not say stuff like that out loud. Yeah, because it could be a temperament thing where they just kind of have a different perspective. And I think about um, that article we have on iMom, uh, Bad Kid Behaviors mm-hmm. That Become Assets Later in Life. I think, you know, sometimes discontentment can come from a place of being ambitious and and wanting to dream big and things like that. So I don't know, maybe there's a way to encourage that side of the temperament and and not the like discontent, mm-hmm. complainy. Yeah, that side of it. I think one thing that shifted my perspective one time too. I don't know if it was in, I don't know if it was when I was working or doing something else, but someone said, "Well, if you don't like something, you have, you can't tell me you don't like it. You have to come up with a better solution." Oh, that would to be it. your father. And so, come so that sounds like someone <laughs> Susan would have said. That would be your father says that all the time. <laughs> Well, that or I feel like it was someone at work, though, or something like that. It wasn't personally to me. It was to like a Mm. group. And it was, you know, if you don't like something, don't just go to your boss and say you don't like it. Did you appreciate that advice? You appreciated that advice? It was good advice? I did because it it made you think of. I was the one that said it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, it was more of just it, it made you think and and reflect and go, okay, well, if I don't like this, how can I change it? What can I do to fix it? And I also had a boss that specifically said, control what you can control. If it's out of your control, it's out of your control. You can't control it. But if there's anything that you can do to change the situation, if you don't like it, do that. And just think of that and and don't just be upset with with whatever it is. Yeah. Mm. I think that, um, Chloe, what you said about the bad kid behaviors that become assets later. I think that a lot of kids who are whiners might be strong-willed kids who know what they want and are vocal about it. I have another friend who's, who's middle child. I mean, 
she, I don't know how to say it in like a kind way. She can be kind of grumpy. She can kind of have an attitude when she, when she knows what she wants, she goes for it and she is upset if she doesn't get it. And I think it's because she is just a very strong personality. And I, I'm excited to see what that leads to for her in adulthood. Yeah. But you know, if your kid, um, knows what they want and doesn't want to give it up, then when they're too young to know how to handle the the right way to process that and speak it, it comes out as complaining. It's funny because I have a friend who she's very driven, very successful, you, you know, just knows the way she wants things and will make it that way. And we were talking about her as a kid and she's saying, yeah, I was the brattiest kid. I whined. I complained all the time. And I was shocked because I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, you're such an amazing adult. But she's like, I mean, think about my personality. Like, I'm so opinionated. Like, Mm -hmm. that's how I was as a kid, too, which I don't know. It just kind of made sense to think about how that behavior was as a kid. And but look at how it's transpired, you know. The hard thing is that it's just so um, it's so annoying. right? (laughs) Yeah, And I think that's the part you have to train out of your child. I mean, Mm -hmm. the Bible clearly says in Philippians, do everything without complaining and, Mm. and arguing. So because it does ruin your relationships. You know, like a that poor trip. mom yeah. was in the car mm-hmm. hiding from the child and her siblings are mad at her. And then, of course, if that habit develops, it's going to be hard to make friends, hard to do well in school because your teachers are going to get annoyed with it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So so how, how channel do you, it? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have to wonder, too, if you cater to that whining, does it Reinforce. produce a really sure. particular adult? Yeah. Yeah. I have interacted with people that are just so particular with things and how things are done or what, you know, what they like and what they don't like. And then it's just, you know, uh, it's just, it is really difficult to be around them. Mm-hmm. Well, in a lot of the stuff I've read, uh, they say, you know, why do kids whine? And one of the main reasons kids whine is because it works. Uh, it gets yeah. the response from their parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, Susan, the verse that you shared, um, how, how do you communicate that to a kid? How do you help it makes sense in their mind of why it's important to to do things without complaining, to do things with a happy heart. Oh, I would. Well, there's a great song, Do Everything Without Complaining and Arguing. I think that's Steve Green. But um, certainly my kids heard that song a lot. How do, you have to. Well, sometimes I just would mimic. I mean, when I want to teach my kids, sometimes I go, which sounds better to your ears? Mm-hmm. Cover your ears. The way you're saying that hurts my ears, my heart. If I talk to you that way. How would how would our conversation sound all the time? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to visit. If they're really little, sometimes you have to demonstrate mm-hmm. to them how they sound. Oh, and yeah. then after, I would younger kids stop and say, "Okay, just stop right there. I can't hear it that way. Please, can you rephrase it in a kind tone, in a kind way, so we can have a conversation?" Mm. It's good. I'm trying to think of biblically, you know, how you explain kind of Chloe I don't know if that's what you're getting at like how you explain to a child that this is why God wants us to to speak without complaining and to communicate without complaining well I think you have to say if you talked like this to your friends would you have friends Mm. No, because you're hurting me. You're hurting my ears. You're hurting, and it it makes me not want to listen. It's not communicating love in a loving way, right? Mm -hmm. So, in the future, if you want a good response from other people, you have to learn to communicate in a way that that is not painful to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, but one of the reasons kids complain is because it works. And one of the reasons it works is because we are tired. Mm -hmm. Moms are tired and the whining wears us down, um, you know, or we're embarrassed. And so we respond to the whining because we don't want people to hear the child whining in the middle of the supermarket or whatever. Um, Oh, I am a hundred percent guilty of that. (laughs) If we're out in public, like at home, I'll let them go. I'll just be like, you can wear yourself down because eventually hopefully you'll stop. If we're out in public, I'm like, here, just take the cookie. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is I think that um, we don't want our kids, and this is a, a bigger statement. We don't want our kids to feel discomfort. We don't ever want them to be uncomfortable, you know? So Mm -hmm. if I'm, bored I'm bored I'm bored and they're whining about being bored then we figure out a way for them to not be bored so I have a funny story about that so we had I had three other siblings there were four of us and back then you know my mom had to take us all to the grocery store there were no babysitters and I remember one time my youngest brother was a tantrum thrower and one day we were shopping and we used to have two carts this was you know you we went to the grocery store once a week and it was a two cart thing and so my older brother was pushing the other cart my younger brother was sitting in the cart that my mom um, was pushing and he started throwing a tantrum 
And literally, the three of us, other kids, and my mom all walked away from the cart. Oh my we gosh. just left him on the aisle. All of a sudden, he was alone. We all went to another aisle and just listened to him until he stopped and went back. Just totally hilarious. shocked, probably. Yeah. No, yeah. He stopped. It's that's like everybody so left him. Wow. The show was over. Yeah. And I think that's what it takes sometimes. Yeah. The show was over, bud. Yeah. Wow. So how do we, uh, I want to talk about like some practical ways to handle whining or complaining, whether your child is five or 15. Um, and we, we kind of already touched on this, that you can tell your child your expectations if they're small. You can say, when you want to talk to me in a normal voice, I will listen. And then you can say, or you can say, let's try again. I like to do this with my guys. Do let's over. try again. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, how can you say that in a way that will make it easier for me to hear you and to respond to you? Because the way that you're speaking now makes it very difficult. Mm-hmm. And kind of like what you said, Susan, you can even um, give them a taste of their own medicine. And I don't think that means like to scream at them or whine at them because that, you know, but you could say here, if I spoke to you always yelling, how would you feel? How would that, it's hard mm. to hear because it makes you, it, the, all of your emotions and things get in the way of what I'm saying. So when you're whining, my emotions of being frustrated with hearing you whine get in the way. That's hard for a little one to understand. That might be for a little bit more of a grown up kid. Yeah, that's good. But um, I also read this little trick and this one <laughs> is one of those like bits of advice that I'm like, how does this play out in the real world? But hear me out. So, you can try to state what you think your child is trying to say. And this, what this accomplishes is that it helps train your kids to use language that looks for solutions instead of dwelling on what's wrong. For example, if your child is saying, I hate this toy, this, you know, this stupid thing doesn't work. You can say, so you want a different toy. So instead of that trains him, this is what you're actually feeling. This is what you should have said. Or if she says, I want it now. You can say, oh, you wish you didn't have to wait. Mm. If he says, she's always taking my stuff, you can say, ah, you want her to respect your things. I don't know if I would have the patience and the, the you know, um, brain power to say that when my child is in the middle of one of these little fits of, of complaining. But Megan, do you think you could do that with James? Oh, man, I feel like I would need to like tape it on my refrigerator or something so that I would remember to do Mm -hmm. it. But it would take a lot of discipline. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's another I'm on printable. Yeah. We can have just that list of (laughs) of uh, go to phrases. I need I need an article on how to discipline yourself like myself. (laughs) 21 creative consequences for yourself. For (laughs) For myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a lot of discipline. I think it's just a time. Training children takes Mm. time. Yeah. And that's the problem. We're often too in the moment busy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good one for for teenagers. If you have a teen that complains a lot, and um, this article actually is just now coming out today, if you're listening to the day the, day the podcast came out, this is iMom's article in the iMom Minute, so make sure you subscribe. But one good trick that um, came from our, our writer, Anna, she said a great way to stop your child's complaining in its tracks, instead of saying, instead of like trying to say, no, this, this situation isn't like this, or see it this way, and this feels counterintuitive, But what you can do is to verbalize your child's wishes. So, for example, Anna said that her son was complaining about basketball practice. And he said it was really long. We had to run a lot of laps. It was boring. And we had to do the same drills over and over again. And she said, I bet you wish you could just start playing games without having to condition or do drills or stuff like that. You could just play. And she said he literally stopped talking and stared at her and said, well, yeah, And then he realized for himself what that would mean. Mm. And he said, but I guess we wouldn't be that good. You know, we want to win games. Mm. And so by affirming what they were saying, what he was saying and agreeing and verbalizing it, it helps them to feel heard. Mm. It helps them to um, they're expecting you to to push back. And so you kind of surprise them that you're not telling them don't think that way. And it allows your child to think through the his own words and how they wouldn't actually work in real life. And I think that's pretty wise. Um, I have a story for that. Um, I so this happened 
as an adult, um, my mom and I were on the phone and I was getting so impatient for my husband to propose to me. And <laughs> I was so annoyed because he told me it was going to happen in 2018. And it was, Dece- no, it was November, the end of November of 2018. And I was getting so mad. And every single weekend we do something really fun. We'd go to the beach. We do. I'm like, it's surely it's this weekend. Surely it's this weekend. It was not that it was not that weekend. So anyways, I was really frustrated and I called my mom and I'm walking around TJ Maxx and I'm like, mom, he said it was going to be this year and it's almost December and I can't trust him. I just don't even like, I don't even know what he's thinking. And my mom's like, you should break up with him. And I was what? like, mom, no. And she's like, see, I guess it's worth it. You should just keep waiting. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he literally was proposing to me the next weekend. My mom was like, stop whining. Like, you're fine. Right. But right. honest to God, it worked. Yeah. It totally worked. Because I was like, wait, I'm complaining, but I actually don't want the solution. Yeah. So I should stop complaining. That's the gist of it. Is, yeah. And it helps them, instead of you telling them how they should feel, it helps them arrive at that conclusion on their own, which is yeah. part of that thought process and getting to that point of thinking like an adult or yeah, closer than an that. adult, yeah. <laughs> We're all still working on that. Yeah. Uh, so one more thing I wanted to talk about is whether or not our kids complaining is because they're modeling our behavior. And mm. if we are complainers ourselves, you know, I think a lot of women like to vocalize how we're feeling. And we don't realize sometimes that when we do it around our kids, um, it's sending them a message of how we speak about others, how we speak about our home, how we speak about our jobs, how we speak about uh, their school. Um, I think that I know that I'm kind of guilty of it sometimes, you know, not necessarily seeing the the brighter side of a situation. Um, we have a no complaining, seven day no complaining challenge printable on iMom. Have you ever taken that challenge, Susan? I so you're not, not a complainer. You're such a positive yeah. person. I can't imagine. I can complain though. At least my husband says I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, day one is write down your three complaint challenges. Day two is pray for each other. Uh, pray for each of your complaint challenges. Day three is pray for yourself. Day four, be positive. Day five, speak positive. Day six, beware. And day seven, reassess. So if you think you're a complainer and it's trickling down to your kids, maybe the no complaining challenge is for you. I think that'd be great challenge for the kids. I think so too. Yeah, maybe mom and kids can do it together. I will include it in the show notes. Oh, competition. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can do eight days with no complaining. <laughs> a swear jar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. I have a complain jar. Yep. Oh, oh Collecting yeah. quarters. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. We're saying boring. You have to put a quarter mm-hmm. in every time. That's yep. a great idea. Yeah. All right. What are and your then whoever s- doesn't complain gets to take the money. <gasps> oh. Yeah. This is all free. <laughs> this is all free tips, moms. <laughs> I could win. Do you have any strategies to c- curb whining and complaining with your kids? You can tell us via the link in the show notes and be sure to subscribe to the iMom Minute to get great articles every day. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.